go for it! <laughs> Uh, welcome to the uh, newest video here at The Dark Stuff. It's me, your buddy Dave, the host here at the, uh, the Dark Stuff channel. I have a really special video for you today because I saw such an incredible show last night. I'm just, I'm, it hasn't even been 24 hours, but I'm still just kind of freaking out about how awesome it was just because it was such a unique experience. I got to see Tommy Stinson from The Replacements, pretty much my favorite band of all time. I mean, uh, a band that I've traveled all across the country to see back in their original run, during their reunion run. I've seen Tommy in all sorts of other incarnations. I saw him play with a band he did briefly called Bash and Pop. I saw him with a band called Perfect. I never did catch him in Guns N' Roses. He was in Guns N' Roses for about 15 years. I never actually saw him in that, but I saw two replacements reunion shows and it was fucking glorious. Now, I heard just a couple weeks ago that Tommy was coming to Omaha and he was doing a, a special show at this place called the Hi-Fi House. Now, let me take an aside here and describe this Hi-Fi House because I had been hearing a little bit about it over the last couple weeks, but I didn't, months really, but I didn't really know anything about it until last night. Last night was the first time I was there. Now. Here in Omaha, on uh, 38th and Farnham, about approximately in town, there's this new building called the Hi-Fi House, and it is a record library. And there's tens of thousands of vinyl records in this library uh, that people can come in and listen to. It's basically, it's a private club at night um, where people can just come in and listen to records and hang out and, and drink wine or drink beer or whatever you want to do. Since it's a private club, you know, they can give you wine and whatnot. And then during the day, they use it for educational purposes, like with uh, junior high kids and stuff, teaching them about music and getting them into learning about different kinds of things. And it's also used with seniors because there is that sort of Alzheimer therapy where you play old music for older people sometimes suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's and it helps trigger memories like the music actually throws them back to some other period and it helps in in the process of retrieving memories and everything so it's a dual purpose thing it's not just a hipster conclave where people come around and sitting around listening to records now I thought it was awesome and uh, but I didn't understand it until I was there and now that I've been inside it's this really cool space with like you know really really well designed and stuff and it's like a gigantic living room with couches and various sets of turntables all over the place and um, I haven't been there for an ordinary night because I'm not a member I'm about to become one I told them last night I want to join um, I got an invitation from a friend and that's why I was allowed to come in but basically it was a private event so I see this event on Facebook and it's like Tommy Stinson uh, performing at Hi-Fi House on August 11th and I found the event on Facebook I'm clicking on it I'm like where how do you buy a ticket you know I want to go I, I, I'm gonna I'm not gonna miss Tommy Stinson playing in town and everyone kept writing on there it's free it's free it's like that didn't sound right to me so I investigated a little bit further turns out you had to be a member of hi-fi house to go or get invited I got myself an invite I went and uh, enjoyed the experience immensely show its face it's so beautiful at night 
Let me talk about the show that I saw because this was fucking amazing. Now, it was essentially like seeing Tommy Stinson in your living room. A living room show is what it was. It was a bigger room than, than here, obviously, probably twice the size of this. But there were couches dispersed all around in like a, a horseshoe type design with Tommy being at the you know, the end of the horseshoe, everyone around him in the round. And he had him and another guy named Chip playing guitar with him. It was just those two. And it was supposed to be a Q&A session first, and then Tommy was going to come out and do a set. And they didn't specify what he was going to play, how long he was going to play, uh, none of that. But the Q&A actually didn't go first. He came about 8 o'clock, and Tommy started playing. He played for over an hour, probably about, you know, 70, 80 minutes or so. Stopped at one point, said the show was over, then came back like a minute later and played some more. Did another show, then did the Q&A afterwards. And the Q&A is really what they're trying to do to document this. They're interviewing every artist that's going to come through Hi-Fi House to do interviews where they talk about records that were important to them when they were growing up and the whole experience and, and all of that. And I'll, I'll touch on that as we get further in this video. So... Tommy comes out, and of course, I got there early. You know, doors were opened at 6, and I was there right at 6 because I didn't want to miss this experience. I had a couch right in front, you know, a couch spot. And I did not leave from that spot. So when Tommy comes on to play, he tells everyone, he's like, hey, stand up. I'm not playing in some fucking mortuary. So even though everyone was sitting on couches, he wanted everyone to stand up. So I was like just, you know, two feet from him. And I have to say that it was very awkward sometimes trying to film it. I did record some segments, but they were, they're were they shorter than my usual ones because of the fact that he was like right there and it does feel weird to be like standing there, you know, holding your phone up in front of somebody like while they're trying to like perform. I will say my photos, the lighting is okay. The video is a little dark. You'll notice when it comes on, there were these huge spotlights around the uh, around the, the the couches and stuff, and they had a professionally set up video that they were going to record. But when Tommy Stinson walked out on stage, he basically said like, "Kill all these lights." You know, it was too much light. So they did, and so it was a little bit darker. So that's why the footage is a little bit darker. But Basically, if you can imagine one of your idols performing acoustic in a living room where you're like right next to him, uh, then that's the experience. Now, I had an added bonus in this one because I met I met Tommy Stinson more than once, you know, and uh, the, the first time was back in 1989 when he was with The Replacements. In 1989, I was 18 years old and I met the band for the first time and I went backstage and I met all the guys. I met Paul Westerberg, I met Slim Dunlap, I met Chris Mars, and I met Tommy, and I've recounted the story of my very negative experience with Paul Westerberg that night multiple times. But I had no negative experience with Tommy, he was super nice, and in fact when I took a picture with him, right as the, the person was about to take the picture, he swung his leg over me and kissed me right on the face. So I'm just like going like, what? You know, like I didn't understand what was happening. But it's a pretty great photo, and I've had that for now 27 years, because it was 1989. So I was showing my friends this photo while we were waiting, and somebody was like, are you going to try and recreate that tonight? You know, and I was like, I don't, I don't think so. No, that would be weird to even ask him. But somebody else asked for him, right? So I had the picture up, and, and my friend who was sitting next to me, she's, she's like, Tommy, come here, you know? And he came over, and he looked at the picture, and he was like, whoa, what happened to me in that picture? And he's like, what happened? He's like, I know what happened to you, right? Because he's talking about how I lost all my hair. But he's like, what happened to me, man? Look at me. And then somebody, uh, uh, my friend was like, why don't you guys recreate the picture? So he sat there and he kissed me again and we took another picture and I made a 1989 versus 2016 like 
thing and I've had it on Facebook and it's been like my most popular picture and on Instagram and stuff. So anyways, I, that was really cool. I was never going to ask to recreate that photo. I never would have asked. I just would be too embarrassed to say anything. So I'm glad my friend said something because if she hadn't said something, I, you know, it wouldn't have happened. And now that it's done, I'm very glad that I have that because that's a cool thing just to see how different we both look. I look the most different. Tommy still sort of looks the same 27 years later, but I, I feel like I look radically different. But the set was almost entirely from Tommy's solo career, his two solo albums, One Man Mutiny and uh, Village Gorilla Head. And uh, both great, by the way. He played a couple of Bash and Pop songs. That was his band he formed post replacements. He might have done a perfect song, I'm not sure. He played a, he did a cover of uh, Nighttime by Big Star. Just a bunch of new songs that were haven't been released yet that I guess he's working on an upcoming album. He also revealed that the Bash and Pop album, which was never given a vinyl release, will be released on vinyl in November, he said. And um, then there was a Q&A afterwards. So, right into like uh, uh, this being a record library and this interview being based on vinyl records. Of course, at the end, it ventured into replacements questions or questions from the audience. And somebody did actually, and this is what made news for me. Somebody said to him something about, you know, what's your favorite replacements album? And he said, well, Tim uh, from 1985 and All Shook Down, which was their 1990 album, the final album that they did, which was a surprise to me that All Shook Down was on there. He's like, oh, the songwriting is just fucking amazing and blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. Then somebody said, what do you think about the mix of Tim? If you're a fan of the Tim album, you know that album sounds so weird. It just does not sound normal. And every song on it is great, but it has a goofy mix. The producer was Tommy Ordelli, aka Tommy Ramone. And uh, Tommy Stinson said that the reason why it sounds that way is because Tommy Ordelli mixed the album in headphones. He's partially deaf from his years in the Ramones, and he puts the headphones on and he blasts it really loud, and to him that sounds normal that way. And he mixed it as though it was normal for him. It just doesn't sound normal for anyone else, and that's why Tim sounds so strange to this day. Uh, it's still a classic album, but man, does it sound weird. And um, the show ended, I got my uh, record signed, my LMAO 7-inch there, so that's kind of cool. And all in all, it was a great event. I imagine I will be reporting more about this Hi-Fi House coming up in the future because I do want to be a member and I do want to be involved and I want to spread the word about this thing because I just think it's super, super cool. So, all right, everybody, I'm going to take off, but uh, I'm going to play as many clips as I can from this Tommy thing uh, to close out the video. Take care, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Stand around